Hi, I hope you all are doing well today. I want to talk to you all today uh, about a very encouraging psalm. In fact, I'm going to read it and then share some comments I have with you all on it. Uh, psalm 63 is an awesome psalm. I read this yesterday and I felt impressed by the Lord to share it with you today. And uh, this is a very encouraging psalm. And even though the, the, there's much turbulence and chaos in the world today, we can refine, we can find our relief and comfort in the presence of the Lord. So let's read Psalm 63. And then again, I'm going to share some comments with you all on it. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in thy night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me, but those who seek that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for foxes. But the Lord shall rejoice in excuse me, but the king shall rejoice in God. Every one that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. You know, one day all evildoers will get what's coming to them. The Lord will punish the wicked. They may get away th with things for a while. Sometimes it seems like they get away with everything. But again, it's only for a while. Eventually it will come to an end. And the Lord will set everything in order when he comes back to rule and reign on earth. My soul thirsts for thee. Do you have an insatiable longing to fellowship with God? The psalmist here seeks the Lord as one seeks water in a dry and thirsty land. We must seek after his presence, after his comfort, his goodness, and all the wonderful aspects of his beautiful nature. Everything about God is just so awesome and we, we cannot even comprehend it all or, or we don't even have words to describe it. It is just so wonderful. But we are to thirst for his presence. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Life is dear, but God is much dearer. The psalmist is saying that divine favor is better than life itself. Our delight should always be in the Lord. And again, even though we go through circumstances in life, there's this much trials and tribulations in this world, we can take comfort in, fa in the fact that the Lord, if we are a child of God, He is with us at all times. And He protects us. He comforts us. He provides for us. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness. Here the king remembers the delights of, of all of the blessings that the Lord has given to him. I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in thy night watches. Let us remember the Lord at all times. Let us remember him upon waking and then when we go to bed at night, let us remember and meditate on the goodness and the words of the Lord. 
His right hand upholdeth us. And our consistency in following the Lord is a tribute to his strength, not ours. For when we are weak, he is strong. And he delights to give his children strength, his strength. And when we, we swear allegiance to the Lord, we never have reason to fear because he takes care of us in all situations. There is nothing greater than the love of God. The love of God, it, it just is so awesome. It covers a multitude of sins. The love of God shed abroad in our hearts helps lead others to salvation in Christ. Those who claim to know God need to examine themselves by asking the following. Do you really have a strong desire for God's presence and purposes to be first in your life? Or do you go through life with your focus mainly on temporary and worldly goals or pleasures of this world? Have your personal desires replaced prayer, Bible study, and true service to God? What are your motives? The Lord sees our hearts. He knows our motives. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Let us examine ourselves and ask the Lord to show us whatever it is in us that needs to be taken out. And I always ask him to give me what he wants me to have, to take out the bad and to replace it with what he wants. That is a great prayer to pray, very simple and short. And along with prayer and Bible reading, our thoughts should be centered on the Lord day and night. For when we are focused on the Lord, all the cares of the world, they cannot move us. Now, even though we, it's not that we're denying that there, there are bad things going on, but we can rise above them. We can be overcomers in Christ because we set our affections on him and not the things of the world. For if he truly is your joy and your hope, your salvation, then we can all do we can do all things, not some things, all things through Christ who strengthens us. So I hope this message has blessed you and encouraged you today. If it has, please share it with others. And until next time, keep looking up. Bye-bye.